your research, uh, you go into nutritional options for some of these behavior conditions. Is there a certain nutrient that these patients might be deficient in? Is that what you're finding, or is it something else? Well, it's, it's individualized. Uh, ADHD is a name given to several completely different conditions, and one has to find out what their individual biochemistry is. Uh, the, probably the most common thing we see is zinc deficiency. Uh, I would say 90% of the children we've seen with, with ADHD, whether it's academic or behavior, are either low or very low in, in blood zinc levels. So one of the things we always want to do is normalize that. Now people who are low in zinc tend to be elevated in copper. Copper tends to be high in people with hyperactivity and ADHD. So I'd say it's, I think it's 68% of all ADHD cases, and we have a huge chemistry database for these people, uh, are high in, are unusually high in copper. Well, copper has a direct effect on the synthesis of norepinephrine, which is an important neurotransmitter, and it comes from dopamine. And if you're high in copper, you'll be low in dopamine and, and too high in norepinephrine. And that means anxiety. And, and actually, what Ritalin does is elevates dopamine. Well, we can also uh, adjust the neurotransmitters by just normalizing their metals, not necessarily having to go to a foreign molecule hmm. with side effects. So in a, in a bigger picture, it seems like we've seen a rise in these behavior conditions uh, over the last, I don't know, 20 years, give or, give or take. Is that, does that correspond to deficiencies then? Is there, is there some sort of reason why, why the two are connected? I think the biggest problem is overdiagnosis. Uh, the uh, National Institutes of Health and the National Institute of Mental Health and the Center for Disease Control, they say that the, the actual incidence of, of ADHD in children is about 8 or 9%. They used to think it was 4.5%. Well, now they're saying 8 or 9%. Well, there are entire cities like Wheaton, Illinois, which is near where I live, 38% uh, of all the children are taking stimulant medication. And if you go to West Virginia and there are entire states where there are maybe five times as many people taking the medication as actually have the condition. So there's an extraordinary amount of, of overdiagnosis, misdiagnosis, and, and use of medications where it's really not appropriate. And then, of course, there are those who actually have the condition and do benefit from the medications. So if we're talking about, in, in a lot of cases, a, a deficiency of, uh, of zinc being one of the minerals, where does that come from? Is that is that come from the the genes of the parents? Is it something you know that's preconception? Is it the diet that the baby is getting? I mean, where 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 can you pinpoint that? Sure, all of your all of your zinc comes from your diet, but the the way zinc is processed in the body is uh, very uh, beautifully maintained by the body. There are proteins in the body that that regulate zinc levels, and even if you uh, person were to chew on bars of zinc and get too much of it, uh, your if that system's working. Uh, then your blood levels will be normal. But uh, we find a lot of people have a metal metabolism disorder involving copper and zinc, especially in behavior and learning disorders. But there are other imbalances. For example, methylation disorders and people who ha are either overmethylated or undermethylated. There are uh, people who have what we call pyrrole disorders, which is a condition that maybe 25% of all ADHD kids have. And, it, and it, that is determined with a urine test and these people are extraordinarily low in B6 and zinc. And because they're so low in B6, these are the kids who have reading disorders. You need B6 for short-term memory. And we've had a lot of children who had uh, diagnosed with dyslexia or reading disorders, and all we really had to do is normalize their B6 levels. There are also children who are malabsorbers. They tend to be very slender, and they don't process foods normally. And in that case, uh, we just need to uh, give them um, sort of full spectrum of vitamins and nutrients to compensate for their body's inefficiency at getting these things into the body and doing the good they're supposed to do.